So way back a while ago, there was a hacker box that was about sound, digital soundscapes it was called. Yeah, it had a uh, little LM386 power amp in there, an a MP3 um, uh, converter, yeah, um, audio codec that includes MP3, um, AAC, the old verbis, uh, you know, a very comprehensive audio decoder chip for playing um, audio files. <clears throat> and there's the uh, 4725 right there. And then that, that little baby, I think, is the one that has the... Yeah, that's got the... So this becomes as a daughter board for um, an Arduino. A shield, I guess you call it. It came with some, you know, nice audio cables. I forgot all about that. This was a nice box, and I, it just sat on my uh, shelf for too long. Um, it came with a VU meter, um, so you could uh, solder this little baby up and create a uh, VU meter with it. Um, and they give you another Arduino, of course. This, um, what the heck was it? Oh, this is the amplifier, the uh, the LM 387, 3 is that again? Yeah, 386 um, amplifier. So um, power uh, little pair, little speaker, <clears throat> which they included. They couldn't give us stereo. They only gave us mono. But better can't be choosers. And what was this? This was a little buzzer of some sort for something. I forget. Um, and what's this? This is this is the um, SD card reader and um, MP3 player. The, uh, and so, oh, uh, wait, or is this just a DAC? Ah, oh, I forget. Anyways, well, we can look. And it came with an SD card, an SD card holder. I think I pulled the SD card out of it, used it for something, and a way to power stuff. So, yeah, that was um, HackerBox, I forget what number is it, seven, something like that. So, yeah, let's, um, let's do this. So about the simplest thing you can do to make sound with um, with a microprocessor is um, what is affectionately known as bit banging. Um, and that's taking a buzzer, like a piezo buzzer like this thing, and turning it on and off at a particular frequency. And that will make a tone. And that's a pretty straightforward thing to do. Um, you just have to declare one of your... Um, one of your digital pins as an output, um, ground the appropriate side of your your speaker to your piezo buzzer. Just pop a, a speaker on there, and then using the Arduino tone library, well, you don't have to use the tone library, you can just define um, a loop that um, will put whatever pin you have your speaker attached to, your buzzer, I shouldn't call it a speaker, your buzzer attached to at a particular frequency. So on, off, on, off, on, off, um, using a square wave. And that will produce a sound. So your piezo buzzer will be responding to a signal that looks something like this. with um, a square wave of a particular um, frequency. So think of that as a wave. So one wavelength is from that falling edge to that falling edge. So that is its wavelength. And then depending on what the time scale here is, you get a very variable frequency. So, you know, um, 440 hertz, that's equal to an A. I think it's A3. I'm not 100% sure about that. Don't quote me. But it's one of the A's. Um, uh, and um, so, yeah, let's let's uh, put some tones on our Arduino. No, that's A4. So the A above middle C. The fourth octave in a piano is the middle C octave. And so there's the underworld theme. But, um, yes, so um, you can get sounds out of just a plain old piezo buzzer bum, 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 bum. Uh, stuck on onto a pin of your Arduino. But it's not very high fidelity. It's only um, 8-bit um, 
sound and it's square wave, so it's not very pleasant, but I mean, it's sound, it's recognizable as melody because it's got that frequency component to it. Um, but you can do better by um, using a, something called an anal a digital to analog conversion chip. And that's also included with our hacker box. So what do we need to do in order to do better? Well, for example, say we have some sort of complex waveform that we're trying to simulate or trying to duplicate. What we can do is we can take samples at regular time intervals and record. So this is an analog waveform. And so what we can do is we can take samples of that analog waveform and create a digital um, record of uh, uh, of the of the various samples that we've taken. So this analog waveform becomes uh, digital samples. And so by doing that, we can digitize the analog waveform or store it in such a way that it can be processed digitally. Now, um, the number of samples that you take will depend, will influence how much fidelity you can get from, uh, from a particular waveform or how accurately you can represent that waveform in your, um, in your digital signal. So there's a number of different um, standards for doing um, sampling of digital waveforms, and you can um, can do all kinds of research on that. But um, uh, one of the chips that they provide is something called an MCP4725, which is a digital to analog conversion chip with an EEPROM, and it's 12 bits. So each sample is storing 12 bits of data, 4096 uh, different values. So, so say your maximum signal, your Vmax is here. So we're going from zero to, well, plus or minus 4096. So is this a 12 bit signed? I forgot. Anyways, we can look at the data sheet, but what we're doing here is basically we're taking a, um, a, a integer, a 12-bit integer, and we're using that to represent mm -hmm. a particular point in time on this waveform and what amplitude that waveform has. And so that's what, um, well, so, sorry, let me back up a bit. This is digital to audio, uh, to analog conversion. Inside of an Arduino, it has something called an ADC, or, uh, yeah, ADC analog to digital conversion. So you can take an analog signal, convert it to digital, so it will produce a bit stream. And then that bit stream can be manipulated or read, and then you feed that into your digital to analog converter, and then out comes sound from your speaker. And that is basically how, so you have a microphone to begin with. It produces an analog signal. It goes into the analog to digital converter. That analog to digital converter creates a bit stream, digital bit stream based on that analog signal. And that analog signal, get, or that digital bit stream gets sent to the digital to analog converter, and that digital analog converter sends it back out into something that's analog and can be fed into a loudspeaker. So that's basically how the audio chain looks. And so this little guy here. is what um, does all of that DAC magic. So um, it will um, convert your 
digital bitstream into some analog outputs. And what does it need to do that? Well, it needs, it's got, that's its output, ground. This needs serial clock and serial data. So this is an I squared C device and you can adjust the I squared C address, I2C, I squared C, um, by shorting out, oh, shorting out some of these pins. You can hardly see that, can't you? These pins here can get shorted out and depending on which pair you've got shorted out, you will change the address the I squared C address and then you've got ground and VCC so I think it's a 5 volt chip if I'm not mistaken but we can check data sheets and stuff like that so one of the things that they suggest as an experiment is to test the accuracy of an Arduino's ADC with a with this DAC and how would you do that well you can write a little program in your Arduino that will take a value, feed it to its ADC, that digital value will get fed to this DAC, that DAC will create an analog value and you can use one of your analog pins to read that value and see if the two analog values match or if they differ by how much. So that's one of the neat little experiments that they suggest that you, um, that you try. So the good folks at SparkFun have a uh, little uh, bit of advice for us on how to configure the um, the soldering of the breakout pins for this guy. Um, A4 and A5 are generally um, I squared C and if not we can define those as I squared C pins um, and then we can define these analog pins A2 and A3 to be either ground or um, 5 volts because they're analog pins so we can define them to have um, um, a particular voltage based on our input vo well actually our regulated voltage um, coming into the board. So we can just pop that guy in there and then we've got our ground and our output and we'll hook that up to the scope and then we can um, actually use this, uh, use a sketch um, to um, produce a waveform coming out of our um, our DAC. So we're going to have a, a, a sketch that produces a bitstream that will result once that bitstream is sent through I squared C to our, um, our DAC a digital to analog converter, a, um, a analog waveform that we can look at on, our, on an oscilloscope. So let's try that. And sure enough, there's a happy little sine wave bouncing across the oscilloscope. So we, um, we have this hooked up so that the output from our DAC is going to analog zero on our Arduino. The code is generating in steps um, various analog values that it's sending uh, into um, the in the built-in um, ADC analog to digital converter. So the ADC inside of our Arduino is going to produce some digital um, value. That digital value is going to be sent to our DAC here, digital to analog converter, and it's going to create an analog value. And then we're going to read that analog value on our pin here and see if we can compare the analog value that we get on A0 with the analog value that we wrote into our, our ADC built into, um, into the Arduino. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the code that we downloaded from the link on the Instructables, um, the Hackerbox's Instructables website. The only thing that we're really changing about the code is to add the um, SparkFun trick of um, powering our uh, MCP uh, DAC with our analog 2 and analog 3 for ground and um, 5 volts. And we also chain, make sure that we've got our I squared C address set correctly. And then the, um, the rest of the sketch is pretty straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to be um, defining some values for, or define some variables to store our analog um, read and our uh, digital values that we're going to be um, uh, using to convert to analog values. <clears throat> then we loop through um, our 2 to the 12 or 12 bits of um, uh, DAC values by increments of 15 just to make it um, a little faster. 
Um, so then we take our maximum voltage, which is the 5 volts, divided it into 4096 steps because we've got a 12-bit DAC, and then we multiply it by our DAC value because of, that's our step size, and that's the step that we're on. And then um, we read it back, wait for a bit, and then um, read, uh, sorry, write it out, wait for a bit and read it back, and then we convert it back into what the um, the analog voltage should be because we've got a 10-bit uh, uh, ADC that we're using in our Arduino. And then we print those values out using you know, standard printouts. And yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it for the code. We do make use of the Adafruit um, MCP4723 uh, library, so, or 25 library. And uh, we also make use of the wire library because it is an I squared C's bus. So now, let's take a quick look at the output and see how accurate our, um, our uh, analog to digital converter is in our Arduino compared to the DAC that we've got the MCP4725, or at least how those two communicate. So let's take a look at our output here for a second. So the DAC value that is being um, read is in this column here, and that is the expected voltage based on that DAC value. So given that value that we've read, this is what we, ex here, this is the voltage that we expect it to have because it's zero to five volts. Now, the ADC value, the value that we sent is here, and that's the voltage that um, the Arduino is um, is was sending. Now, remember that we've got a 20, a 12-bit value for our DAC output, and our Arduino is 10-bit, so we've got this conversion here, converting between the 10-bit value and the 12-bit value. But then we want to um, also compare um, the voltages. But notice that the voltages are pretty close. Um, that's 8 millivolts. That's, um, eight, uh, yeah... Uh, six millivolts and it gets down to an error of um, just a one millivolt or so depending on which um, which digitization um, level we're at and you'll notice from the uh, from the from the uh, from the data sheet that there are some nonlinearities in the uh, in the DAC and uh, they get um, higher or lower depending on whether you're close to or uh, close to or uh, the maximum voltage or close to the minimum voltage of the conversion. There's also some nonlinearities based on the steps size and there's some pass-through of digital voltages and things like that. So you're not expecting it to be completely 100% accurate, but it does look like it comes out with um, a pretty a pretty close uh, approximation of the, the DAC to ADC conversion through our Arduino and through our MCP4725 chip.